So here's Ira's uh, wire job his mother asked me to fix. Here's the what used to be a live wire coming here. And it, uh, he, uh, it's innovative, got to give him that. But he attached just a, an extension cord to the live wire using electrical tape. So I'm going to fix that because we don't want Ira to wire a Fira. It's a wimpy little extension cord. Nowhere near big enough to carry any kind of a current. So this wire here, for all intents and purposes, ends up being a, a fuse. <laughs> First of all, these wire staples here I actually can't reach this one, so it's still in there. These things are almost impossible to get out. Here's a trick. What I did, so I'm going to just leave that one in there, but I'll be able to pull the wire through or cut it one or the other. But anyway, if you take the drill here and just drill next to those two things going inside there, and then you can pull it out very easily with a pair of these glass strips. Now, if you don't drill it first, it's almost impossible. Trust me. Oh, and yes, I checked. You always want to make sure the power is off. Check it yourself. Don't trust someone else to turn it off. I did that once. When I stuck my finger in the socket, I got it. Quite a jolt and the person said oh sorry you forgot it so yeah turn it off check it double check it yourself all right so here's what we got we got the existing wire coming in from the right which I'm going to reuse I'm going to put a box up there and whenever you put a wire through a box you always want to clamp or a fitting or something and because the wires would otherwise be exposed to the wall it's surface wiring so I'm going to use conduit PVC conduit with the proper fittings and then down to another box where I'm going to put the receptacle. So there's the existing wire. I couldn't reach way up there so I just cut it but it's plenty long enough. And good news it didn't spark when I did that. So um, alright so I'm going to pull over here I'm going to put the box right about there and then run the, the conduit down this way. And normally I just take a hammer and a screwdriver and do this but I only have one hand so It's just pop out of here. So it's just a regular Romex wire coming in this way and for that use this clamp and of course the clamp has got to make sure that it fits this that's a half inch. And it's going to come down through the box here and come out here and for that I'm going to run it through with conduit using a fitting like this. It's funny how different disciplines do things differently. If you're an electrician you think it's perfectly normal to tighten a nut using it to tighten a nut using a screwdriver. You take the screwdriver and hit it with a hammer, cinch that up. If you were a mechanic, you would think that was crazy talk. Anyway, so I'm going to take the screwdriver and the hammer and cinch that up a little bit. And same with the other fitting. Now I'm using a box here because of the transition between just the regular bare wire and the conduit. Um, you know, normally you use a box whenever there's a splice. Don't ever, ever put a splice in without a box, ever. Um, for two reasons. One is if there's ever a fire, it's hopefully contained in the box. And the other reason is because um, if you ever, like if there's a, a problem, you can easily inspect it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mount that up on the wall. Uh, using a couple of screws. See those holes in the back? I'm going to take two screws and do one in each corner and run that wire through there on the right side and down through where the conduit's going to go where I put that fitting. If you've ever seen any of my other videos where I'm doing wiring in the bus or something you know I have this thing about conduit. It's not really serious. It's like an FWB thing. But this is a half inch PVC conduit and uh, I normally would just cut this like with a pipe cutter but I'm visiting friends in Vermont I don't have one so I'm just going to use a hacksaw mark where I want it and uh, this I'm not going to use cement on this because it's not for plumbing it's just wiring see I left that little loop up there just because it looked like something somebody who knew what they were doing would do And then it's just kind of hanging down here and the conduit's going to come down to about there. 
and that's where the other outlet or the other box will be. First I gotta cut the conduit. Yep, I measured it. Okay, so there it is. As you can see, the box up here is mounted on that uh, cross member, which does not exist down here, so the conduit is sticking out from the wall further than it needs to be. So you're probably asking yourself, how in God's name do you plan on doing that? And what were you thinking when you did this? Well, I asked myself that question many, many times in my life, which is what I'm going to use this for. I'm going to put this behind there and mount the uh, box onto there. Line everything up. Screw it all in. We'll see what that looks like, huh? All right, that's what I'm talking about. There's actually a special tool for this. But I don't have one here. You take. I'm just going to take a knife at the very edge of it. Just score along here. And I can't really do that and hold the camera at the same time, so I'm going to do that. But I'm just going to take the very the very edge of this, not cutting very deep, and just score right along there, and then I'll show you that. Once you do that, you can just kind of peel this stuff off. Okay. So I'm just going to cut this off here. And then there's this piece of cardboard in here. I'm just going to pull that out and cut that off. And now we're going to have three. We've got the bare copper wire. We've got a white wire and a black wire. Okay, so now I'm going to strip these. These are 12-gauge uh, wire. And uh, it probably should be marked somewhere on the, the, wi the wire someplace, but I, I just, I know it's 12-gauge wire. Um, so I'm going to use this wire stripper and see where it says 12. I'm going to clamp down there, kind of wiggle it, and then pull it back. Okay, so here's what that looks like. It's the wire stripped. And I'm about to... Here's the outlet we're going to use. Notice how one is silver and one is gold. If you can't see that one's silver and one's gold, don't wire stuff. Because you can't be a colorblind and be an electrician, I guess, and get a license at least. Uh, because this is important. The black one always goes to the gold terminal. Black gold, the white one goes to the white, uh, the silver terminal. White silver, black gold. Don't get them backwards. It's very, very important. This one here is the hot wire. So if these were live, I'd be getting a shock if I touched this one. This one is the neutral wire, and it's the same as the ground. The ground basically gives you another path in case there's a short. So it's a safety thing. But to make a complete connection, you just need these two. Now this is a the last uh, outlet on the circuit. If I was putting more on there, what I'd want to do would be to splice the two wires together and then leave a third wire hanging out like this and that would go into the outlet. So don't just connect it across the outlet. That's the wrong way to do it. So you don't want it like if this was the circuit was continuing, you don't want to hook a wire, one wire up here and the continuation there. Don't do that. Splice the two together and hook the one wire into here. So there are different kinds of these. This one, the wires go in here. And you screw this down. Sometimes you have to bend them around. Sometimes there's a little slot you can just stick them in. But this one, I'm going to stick the wire through that, tighten it down. Okay. Black gold, white silver. Don't forget that. Very important. Okay. My friends bought a house, and the people, it was a home built house, and Half the wires, half the uh, outlets were wired backwards. Whew. Lucky somebody didn't get electrocuted. Okay, so now we still got this this guy, this ground wire. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. I'm going to use one of these, a pigtail. And these are uh, the easy way to do it. You can see there's a little green screw on the end of this green wire. And so this green wire screws into the out the uh, the box right there that hole there so here you can see in the box there's five holes these four holes are for holding it attaching it to something and that one is for is threaded and it's for attaching this ground post thing so if you don't don't put a screw in that to hold it to the wall by mistake here's the one coming from the wire and so I use the uh, knife and 
strip that the stranded one in the middle, wrap the other one around it. If this was uh, one of the other two wires, I would actually use a wire nut and everything, but it's ground. And I see a lot of people do stuff like this with the ground wire. Green wire is grounding the box. And this wire is attached to the green wire, and both of those are attached to the ground on the receptacle, which of course is tied into this. Okay, so we're just about done here. Now we just got to tuck all these wires back into the box there and screw the receptacle in. There we go. Better than the fire trap. Oh, I need a cover for that. I forgot. Oh well, to be continued, I guess. Anyway, now that needs a flat cover. Hey, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Bye. See ya. Yeah.